So this time we're going to talk about the compositional technique, negative space. That's essentially just where you have a large amount of your image with basically nothing in it. Now this often does require use of other techniques and other compositions. As you can see here, I've got this big expansive open sky. And to do so, I have positioned my main subject off and down into the bottom right corner. I do wish this horizon was level, actually, but I was floating in water, so... Here's another example. So, this one doesn't have as much negative space because, obviously, we've got this large dark area on the left. Even though the subject itself is small, that large dark area in this kind of expansiveness, whiteness, does kind of break up that negative space. But even still, we do have a pretty big expansive area of negative space and it still has that negative space feeling. Now this also illustrates another concept too with negative space. It can create a feeling of smallness or sometimes isolation depending on how it's done. It's not necessarily bad, it just is what it is and be aware of that. This has a little bit more varieties in the tones, having the sky and the water and these light and dark values. So the feeling of negative space might not be as strong in this one because that value change that you see in the clouds and in the water does break it up a little bit, but you still get overall that feeling of negative space. Now in the other images, you had like expansive skies to create negative space. Now that being said, you don't always have to have a sky. By using a blurry background, that can also give a similar effect to negative space. The feel is a little bit different, but it can have that same commercial technique if you can achieve that blurry background with your camera. And this can be taken to extremes as well, like dropping your horizon line way, way down to the bottom, like even below that rule of thirds idea. In addition to being day or sunset, it can be night as well. We've got a lot of expansive darkness in this shot here. This one actually took a few shots to turn it out because of the night lighting and trying to shoot at night. I actually had to do a little bit of photo merging to get one where I was happy with the clarity of the Ferris wheel, as well as with the lights along the water and along the edge of the pier. Similar to the previous picture with the bee, so once again here you can see a very blurry background that creates that sense of negative space. And the reason why this is a popular technique and why it's in fairly good demand is because it allows you to drop text on the image itself and create like a layout with it. Now I've just dropped in some lorem ipsum. This is actually a, a variant that uses nature words, but you get the idea. So you can throw on a title, you can throw on some text, and you can work with that within the image, which gives you additional options design-wise than if this was all filled with content and would then make it hard or nearly impossible to drop text on top of it without it being messy or hard to read. Another example with text on it. Another example with the expansive sky instead of a blurry background. So achieving this is pretty easy actually. It's very similar to rule of thirds. Now in a lot of mine, I like to keep my subject matter still large, so I'm still pretty close to my subject matter, and I just like to have a big expanse of space either on the left or the right, so I use a lot of rule of thirds in it. But that's not always the case. There's a good number of people that keep their subject matter much smaller, sort of more similar to my sunset picture, or to some extent even the scuba diver. So I'm just going to move this over to the right, well, panning my camera to the left to move my subject to the right, and now I've got this expanse of sky. Now the back of that little flower does bother me a little bit, but with where I have the tripod positioned, I would really have to move my tripod and relocate, or I would have to kind of uh, try bending the flower down a little bit and out of the view without hopefully damaging it. So that would make it a little bit stronger, and that would make that a little less distracting, give a better feel for negative space, but even still you get the idea. It's not hard to do. You just have to keep in mind what is behind your subject. I intentionally have my camera very low on the tripod looking up at the flower. If I didn't, you would have a whole lot of other plants and stuff in the way. So you have to keep in mind more, not just what your subject is, but what's around your subject and what you're going to see behind your subject.